Welcome back everyone. So slight change of gears, this video is going to focus more on math subjects because I've had some requests to go over this. And so today I'm going to focus on how you can improve in this area, even if you're not typically a maths person. So to help with this, this is how I'm going to break down this video. The first part, I'll be going over how you can learn the content more effectively. So this occurs during class or before class, then how you can process the content so when you're doing questions or any practice homework. And then finally, how you can effectively apply the content. So during SACs, tests, or exams. And just as some background, for VCE, I did methods, spesh, and also uni maths. And I guess you could say I also did further for two weeks, but then I dropped it. That's another story. Anyways, the point I'm trying to get at is that after doing all these maths related subjects, I realized that the ways I studied for all of these was mostly the same. So that's why I wanted to share my process with you and how you can approach any math subject in the future. So to learn the content, my favorite way to learn any new concept actually started before class. Now, you definitely don't need to learn the entire syllabus during the holidays, but it's going to greatly benefit you if you just watch a simple video covering what you're going to learn in class the next day. So if you get one of those study timetables that most schools usually have, and you know that you're doing derivatives next lesson, then it's a good idea to have a look at, let's say, a video by Khan Academy or Eddie Wu, because they explain these difficult concepts in very interesting and very easy to understand ways. So I highly recommend this. And this part, I don't really view it as homework because it doesn't need to be long. Usually these videos only go for 10 or so minutes. But just by doing this simple practice, studies have shown that this will boost your understanding in class as well as your academic performance. And for me, this alone saved me a lot of confusion during the actual lesson. So it made it easier to follow along with what the teacher was saying rather than trying to understand something for the first time. And then you might be wondering, what do you do in class then? Well, as your teacher is going through something, I found it helpful to write down questions about any areas you're still unsure with. Because sometimes I find you get overwhelmed with this sea of maths knowledge, and it's hard to actually identify what you actually don't know. So in class, or whenever really, by writing down questions, this made it easier to follow up with the teacher and actually find out what you don't know. So as ironic as it sounds, finding the right questions is sometimes more important than finding answers. Next step is processing the information. So this is when your teacher has taught a concept in class and now it's your turn to do questions or whatever practice you're meant to do. And the main source we turn to are textbook questions, which is a great place to start, especially when dealing with a new concept. But I will say that it's very easy to fall in the trap of being inefficient with these questions. For example, doing every single question in a chapter might be good in some cases, but other times it can be quite draining. So here's what I like to do. First, if you notice two very similar questions like these two, which are basically the same question, but just with different values, then you can just do one of these questions. And if you get it correct and understand all the steps, then I don't do the second one unless I need extra practice. And also for questions such as this one with many parts, I usually just pick three of these. So one question from the start, one from the middle and one from the end. And this usually gives you a range of difficulty. But here's the catch. For every question I would get wrong, I would do another two questions. So let's say I got A wrong. Well, it looks like I'm doing B and C as well. And if for whatever reason, I just keep getting them wrong and I finish all of these questions, then I think it's a good idea to put a star next to it and then visit this question after a couple of days, just to further consolidate this concept. And the reason I did this was for two reasons. First, I find this more efficient because if you're comfortable with a concept, there's no need to do 10 questions on something simple. On the other hand, for a hard question, you want to master that concept, which is not just about when you can just get one question right, but when you can't get a question wrong. And that was my process for understanding content, starting from simple questions and slowly building up to the harder ones. And again, this is not a hard rule, so feel free to experiment with exactly how many questions you do. And I will quickly note that the worked solutions are very valuable in this process because it shows you how teachers or, or professionals are approaching these questions. So definitely see if you can get a copy of these, either ask your teacher or another good place to look are the trusty Reddit forums. So if you just search methods 34 work solutions, which is what I did, I'm sure you can find work solutions there as well. Now everyone's favorite section, exams and SACs. 
And in particular, I'm going to focus on how you can approach application questions because these are the most challenging. And these are the type of questions that are going to make up most of your SACs and also exam two of your final exam. And the common advice here is just to do more practice. Although that is correct, I never really like this advice because it's a bit vague and inefficient because how much exactly is just more practice? I'm not saying that quantity isn't important, but I think it's better to make sure you fully understand an application question before you move on to the next. And sometimes if your school like mine only gave you one practice sack, it might be hard to find other high quality resources that are going to mimic what your actual sack is going to look like. So that's why for each application question I did, I would make my own set of work solutions. So here's what I mean. Let's look at this question. I like to write out exactly what I'm doing for each step. That way, when I look at this in the future, I will know exactly what my thought process was at that time. So in this question, I have a 120 page book that has a certain number of lines per page. And this is our variable P. And now if we decrease the number of lines per page, so if we decrease P by three, we end up with 20 extra pages to fit everything. And we're asked to find what P is equal to. Now I won't go through each of these steps, so you can pause and read this if you want. But the main point I'm trying to highlight here is that I am writing out exactly what I am doing for each step. And I personally found that this way of doing it made me understand the question much better and it makes it easier to review and remember exactly what you've done since you can follow the steps, which are in green, to do similar questions. So this helped me tremendously when I was doing any practice sacks or practice exams. And you don't have to do this the first time when you're going through these questions because that might be time consuming. But what I like to do was after I do my practice sacks and exams and I've checked my answers, then I would grab a new copy and make a more polished set of work solutions. So I really hope that this method can help you overcome some of the challenges that you might face during application questions, because this definitely helped me streamline my thinking and made setting out my work more logical. All right, so that is it for this video. Hope that was helpful and let me know what you want me to cover next.